Hi everybody, it's Jay-Z from Living Easy, and I'm here with a photo tip tutorial on how to edit underwater photos taken with a GoPro. I'd like to give a big shout out to JP Danko over at DIY Photography. His advanced tutorial is what inspired this video. Before we get started, I'll give you a little background. The image we're working with today was taken at Opal Reef a little over a year ago with a GoPro Hero 3. So to get started with the editing process, I'm going to come down to Lens Corrections and hit Enable the Lens Correction Profile. Now on this particular image, that doesn't add any value because I have a nice flat image here to begin with. But if you had that sort of rounded fisheye look of the GoPro and you wanted to fix it, this is where you would do that. Moving up, the next step in the process is going to be setting the white balance. And if you remember from our editing photography, uh, toddler photography video, you know that the dropper is our preferred way to do that. And so I click the dropper here to pick it up, and I need to find a neutral part of the image that I can set the white balance for. And you notice up here on the left, my preview adjusts to tell me what I'm going to get from selecting this area for my white balance. And I want those three numbers on the bottom to be pretty close, but more importantly, I want that preview image to give me a good place to start with my color. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose this. It does look a little bit too purpley, so I might bring that down a little bit and maybe bring the temp up just a hair. And I, I think I'm happy with that and I can start there. The next step in the process after we've done the white balance is to look at the exposure of the image. Now this one actually looks pretty good straight out of the camera, so I'm not going to touch that. But I, I am going to come down here to the contrast and bring that up. And as I slide to the right, I'm just kind of waiting for it to feel like it's too much. I'm going to go ahead and take it all the way. I like what it does to the image. It gives me some more of these shadows and it makes it pop and it's not distorting too much of the quality. It does bring the whites a little bit high but I can fix that later. So next up what we'll do is move on to the blacks. The option key or alt if you're on a Windows computer it will give me a mask when I go to adjust the blacks and so as I drag to the left you can see that it gets all nice and technicolor on me and that shows me everywhere that the blacks are clipping or as you can see in my preview image it, they just go completely black so sliding this back to the right until most of those dots disappear I still have a little bit of yellow in the lower right and I'm gonna go ahead and let that go and now the image is really starting to come together so now that we've done the blacks will move on to the highlights and again I'm going to hit the option or alt key if you're on a Windows computer and click so that I get the mask and I will start to drag this to the right and you can see that this patch of sand down here on the bottom left just barely starts clipping when I get it up over 20 so I'm going to drag it down a little till that goes away and then I'm going to let go and I'm actually really impressed with where we've come and we're not done yet. You can see the difference before and after. So now that we have this taken care of, let's go ahead and bring up the clarity a little bit. The lens is shooting through a considerable amount of water so the image is going to be somewhat soft and now that I've brought up the clarity and it's starting to just pop a little I'm going to go ahead and adjust the vibrance and you don't want to be too shy with the vibrance. I'm actually going to bring it all the way up. Do I leave? Eh, I'll leave it at 50. I really like how it brings out the violet and the coral here and makes the fish and some of this yellow come out a little bit more. I will also adjust the saturation but because I'm at such a colorful place I'm going to go ahead and only bring it up just a little bit because I don't want it to start looking too over-processed. The only thing I notice is like over here I have a little bit of noise and it shows up even more so when I 
zoom into 100%. So I'm going to scroll down here to the detail section and adjust my luminance slider. And that'll just kind of clean up some of these shadowy areas and a little bit of the noise in the water. Generally, the consensus is that you can get to about 50 before you really start to impact the sharpness and detail in the image. The color slider for noise reduction is one that you want to use very sparingly. So I'm just going to add a little bit and zoom back out and see what I think. I am very happy with the color and the exposure, but I do think that there's some distracting pieces down here at the bottom. One of the big pieces to the underwater photos is that you want to shoot very wide angle lenses and you want to get very close to your subjects. In this particular image, I'm a little further back, but I am still shooting with a wide lens. And the nice thing about the wide lens is it gives you space to trim off, to kind of fine tune your composition. I'll be honest, I was trying not to drown more so than making sure I had the exact right composition. And with a GoPro, you can't see. You just kind of point and shoot anyways. So I'm going to crop off some of this on the right, get these sticks poking up at the bottom. And I like this little piece of coral back here, so I'm going to try and not cut that off at an awkward place. And I'm going to go ahead and accept that crop. And here we go with the final image. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please be sure to like the video below. And if you have any questions or additional tips, be sure to share them in the comments. Head on over to the blog, livingeasy.us, if you want to learn more. Thanks.